So today we're going to talk about AWS's serverless ledger database offering known as QLDB. We're going to talk about what makes it awesome, when to use it, and then actually build a full API that talks to a deployed QLDB instance in the cloud. So first of all, what is QLDB? And it is the Quantum Ledger Database. So it's a ledger database built on blockchain technology, and there's a lot of interesting features that come from those facts. So first of all, it is immutable. Second of all, it always has a historical data set. And in the case of QLDB, it is fully serverless and has some really interesting scalability options, and along with some really interesting pricing options. So as far as actually using the database, you're going to want to use it as a document database style. It has a SQL style querying language, which makes you maybe want to lean towards using it as a relational style, but I've tried to do that and performance wise it doesn't scale and pricing wise it doesn't scale. I did it that way and it pretty much shot me in the foot. Um, to be honest, it cost me like 50 cents, but in terms of the costs of QLDB, that's kind of shooting yourself in the foot, and that's how affordable this offering is. So like I said, it does have a SQL-like querying language that's named Particle, and while it does do relational style commands like inner join and things like that, you're going to want to design your models to be more document-oriented, because that's what's going to actually scale. And so you can do things like nested queries, and you can do things like deep hierarchies inside of your documents, and that's going to be the approach you're going to want to take. So that's one thing I really like about QLDB is that it takes that document style approach and it makes it really easy to query for your data and store your data in document style designs. So another thing I really like about QLDB, and this is more of a use case thing, but it does have full immutability and historical tracking of the record. So that's super useful when you're talking about things like auditing and when you're talking about things that you don't want anybody to be able to modify historically and you need to keep a record of permanently. And in the past, you know, you'll see relational designs that do this kind of thing using audit tables and things like that. With QLDB, you don't have to. It's automatically managed for you, out of the box, and it's completely secure and very, very useful. Another great feature of QLDB is how simple the infrastructure as code is to spin up a QLDB ledger. And when I say it's easy, I'm saying it's literally five lines of infrastructure as code. So from a perspective of DevOps, you don't have to worry about managing your scale from a memory perspective, from a CPU perspective. You just say, I want a ledger, and it's going to scale according to your, to your needs. So another very useful feature of QLDB was the stream events based off of QLDB queries. So let's say you do an insert record, it's going to drop some information onto a Kinesis stream, then you can have a listener downstream that does something like shoot it off to a vendor API, or it inserts it into an Elasticsearch uh, system for easier querying. So there's a lot of things I like about QLDB, but the one thing I don't really like is the way that indexing works with querying. And to be honest, it's not really an issue with QLDB, it's kind of the nature of the service. So while they're making really, really good strides, even within the last month or two, there's some few things you need to understand when you're do doing your model designs that are gonna be crucial to making sure your pricing and your scalability and your, uh, your performance stays where you need it to go. So the key thing to understand is that when you do a query, you need to do your query against an index and it has to be a complete equality operation. So you can't do a select like, you can't do a uh, select greater than or anything like that. You need to make sure you're doing direct equality so you're looking up somebody by ID, uh, you're looking up somebody by their first and last name and you have indexes set on those first and last name columns. Because if you don't, it's gonna scan the entire ledger database and each one of those scans starts creating read operations and you get charged for those read operations and they can pile up pretty quick. So you need to keep an eye on your indexes and making you gotta need to make sure that you are doing your equality lookups in a way that is consistent and uh, operational really with your design. So when I talk about QLDB being affordable, I'll give you a couple examples of what I've done and the kind of pricing options that I got out of it. So one of the big things we used was an auditing tool and we used QLDB for that. So every time you accessed some data, we wrote a record to QLDB and over the course of like a week or so, we wrote about 2 million records. And I think after looking about three weeks later, we were charged about 70 cents to have a database containing 2 million plus records which is phenomenal, 70 cents for a month or so of work. I think that's a pretty good trade-off for a, you know, a ledger database. However, one weekend I did some performance work and I was spamming the QLDB with inserts and with like queries. And like I said earlier, when you do like queries, you're gonna get a lot of read operations. So in a single weekend, 
I generated about 75 cents worth of costs over probably like 3,000 records just because my read ops were not tuned appropriately. So while this can be ridiculously affordable, you got to make sure again that you're doing your indexes correctly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually build a REST API that's talking to a QLDB database and we're going to build it with Nest, with TypeScript, and we're going to use Nest QLDB as our ODM tool. So I skipped ahead a little bit. I did Nest new uh, QLDB REST demo. I created a folder called CFN and this is where I put all my infrastructure as code information. And for me, I always have a local deployment script. So in my case, I'm using PowerShell. This can be copy and pasted into a shell script. You just need to change these two slashes. When I'm doing a full Nest app deployment, you're gonna to wanna to run these build and uh, zip steps. But for us, we're just gonna actually run a package and a deployment script because for us, we're just generating an actual QLDB resource. We're not creating any lambdas or uploading any code artifacts yet. So for us, we just package and deploy. I talked about how simple the infrastructure as code is for QLDB. This is it. These few lines of code, these few properties. Uh, the All you really do is give it a name. The, the scalability is already set up for you. You don't have to manage memory or CPU or anything like that. You just supply a name and then you have a couple uh, configuration options. Deletion protection, you're usually gonna want this to be true. I made it false because I've already, to you know, make sure I'm not wasting your time, I ran this deployment script already and I had to drop the stack. And this deletion protection, make sure that you can't disable your ledger or delete your ledger on accident. So you want this to be true. I said it as false for now. I'm on Windows, so I made this a PowerShell script. So let's do deploy. Alrighty, so I'm gonna come here. We have our QLDB REST demo successfully created with our ledger. Ignore these other ones. They're not important. These are the ones you want. So we already created our ledger. You get tons of metrics out of the box. Super useful. But now we want to actually use our ledger. So my buddy and I, Ben Main, have created this Nest QLDB uh, package, which I think is super, super simple. Uh, we kind of took some inspiration from Dapper to make a really easy query service. Uh, and we also automatically generate some repository layers for you. So we're going to be leveraging the repository layers. When you start needing to do things that are more complicated, you're going to want to jump into that query service layer because that's where you're going to really unlock all the things you need to do. So I need to do a clean install again. So here we go again, another fast forward. So in the meantime, you know, we can talk about how this actually works. So the idea is you're going to give uh, NestQLDB some models and you're going to decorate those classes appropriately. And what this is going to do, it's going to automatically generate your tables on startup and it's automatically going to generate your indexes. Uh, in the past, we have a note here that is now out of date. Uh, we talk about how you need to disable this flag because indexes cannot be created after the initial creation. Well, that's no longer true. They pushed changes recently that now you can create indexes on the fly, which is fantastic. That was a huge hang up for me because when you change your indexing, now you gotta find a way to get your table recreated uh, from scratch. So not super fun. Um, in this example, we have a user model. We define that here under the tables property and that's all you need to do to get up and running. So we're gonna do that now. I'm going to create a new module. So let's cd into source, nest generate. Let's do it to do, generate to do. Oop, generate module to do. And then let's let that create first. So we now have our to do module. It has been imported automatically into our app module. So then I'm also going to create a to do cert or to do controller. And I'm going to manually create to do dot model dot ts. So the decorators we have. We really just care about QLDB table. 
And this is what's going to define your class. It's going to decorate it and let NestQLDB know that this is what it's going to generate a uh, ledger table for. So export class to do. Let's see what browsers we got here. So we have a table indexes option. In our case, uh, we don't really need this, but what you would do is you can say, so let's make a new property called, um, I don't know, key. So if you need custom keys that you need to index off of, you can just pass it that name and that's what generates it, the, the index. In our case, we're just gonna let the ID that is automatically created by QLDB be our index. So I'm gonna leave this out. Uh, you can also pass it a uh, table name. So if you wanna name this to do items, you can do that. I can't type. Uh, to do items, you can do that. But we're just gonna let it be default. So we're just gonna do QLDB table. And let's give it a description, which is a string. And we'll give it a uh, complete Boolean. So that's all you need to do to set up your table. Now to actually create the integration with that, we're gonna come back up here. We're gonna keep it simple and just do a uh, for root. If you're doing uh, an actual application, you're probably going to wanna to environmentalize what you're doing. So the QLDB driver is probably gonna take in different values based on whether you're in dev or in prod, um, things of that nature. But in our scenario, we're just gonna go with what we know to be the QLDB name, which we supplied right here in this parameter, QLDB REST demo dev. And if you're wondering how this authentication works, it's like I said, the system has that key ID and key secret are already in place. So locally, I'm already gonna be authenticated. And when you deploy to Lambda, it's already gonna have that AWS uh, IAM context. So you're pretty much all set up, ready to go. So like I said, we need to define here all of the tables that are gonna be actually created and managed by Nest QLDB. So let's fire it up and make sure we're still running. Busted. So I didn't follow the instructions. There is a peer dependency to AWS SDK that I did not install. So go ahead and install that guy. Let's try this again. Uh, missing region. Uh, I will add the region here, and now we should be up and running. So if I hit to do, we don't have any routes set up, so that makes sense. So let's come back to our to do controller. It's that simple get. Uh, let's just return an array. So we got our array. So ta da, we have a working API, and we have an ODM managing our query our QLDB information. So we're going to want to inject this repository for the to-dos. Uh, let's go back here. So we gave you a nice, simple inject repository decorator. You supply the symbol of the model you type it appropriately. And now, so like I said, we don't have a get all here and there's a reason for that. We don't want you to scan the whole table accidentally. You do have a query option and you can pass uh, a object here that'll actually do a parameter by parameter lookup, but we're not going to enable that just yet, but we will enable a create method. All right, so we're gonna change this to post, name it create, and then call create here. So as far as the body, define that parameter, to do, and to do. Now technically, this is a partial to do because it is an interface. It is not actually the class. You'll want to set up a nest class transformer integration to actually make it be a class. But for us, I'm gonna be lazy 
and just pretend like it is the class. But again, it's it's really not. So keep your, keep that in mind. So I'm gonna open up Insomnia. We're going to create our first to do. And if we look at our interface, we're going to have a description. And we're going to have a complete flag. True, description, do stuff. And that is going to be a post request. Boom. So we're already storing data in our QLDB database in a matter of like five minutes and we get automatically generated ID. You don't really get to own this. This is purely owned by QLDB and it's part of the metadata of the object. So that is a limitation of QLDB right now. But we now have this. So we can set up a get ID, get one, ram ID, Turn away this to use repository, retrieve, and pass it the ID. And for consistency, let's call it rename. So that's back up and running. Boom. Get endpoints already done. Fantastic. So let's have a update. Or replace, rather. So we're going to take in the ID from the parameter, and then we're going to take a to-do from the body. So, update this to put. Let's set complete to false. Server's back up and running. Another thing I love about Nest, and me, like, by the time you're ready to make your, your changes, you already are up and ready to go. So I sent my put request. I didn't. Uh, that doesn't actually return anything. So to validate it, I'm going to then do a get. And our complete flag is now false, as we asked for it to be. So yeah. We, we set up an API completely in a matter of a few minutes. We have a database that is serverless. It's gonna cost us pretty much nothing to build on. Uh, as you scale, you might have to do a little bit more work as far as doing more complex querying and using events and Elasticsearch and things like that. But out of the gate, you're gonna pay virtually nothing because doing direct lookups and doing uh, write operations is very cheap. So super cool tool, really easy to get up and running. Check out QLDB for AWS. Uh, if you like Nest, which I love Nest and I think you should use Nest, try it out. Install Nest QLDB, get it up and running. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if I can help. You.